Hey you. Yeah you. Does your microphone sound like this? Hi guys, this is so and so with doing the blah de da da thing, and I just wanted to let you know. Now, would you like your microphone to sound like this? Hey guys, Neo here, and today we are going to be doing some really cool stuff with some microphone things and stuff. Well, if your answer was yes to this, then have we got a deal for you. Hey guys, Neo here, and uh, if you're still here, then you probably realize that this is going to be another tutorial over Open Broadcaster. And this tutorial is kind of special. It's going to help you take your microphone from sounding like junk, even if, you know, saying it's like junk, not really saying your microphone is junk, but if it sounds like junk, that, well, you know what I mean. Anyway, it's going to improve the, uh, the uh, audio quality of your microphone and allow you to do several cool little things. Um, this was kind of a request. Someone, someone in the comments uh, requested that I do something over audio editing. And I got to thinking about it. One of the major limitations to OBS when it comes to recording for YouTube is that it only allows one audio stream output. Unlike several other applications that allow dual audio streams, so you can adjust, you know, you can edit your voice independently of the um, system sounds, your music, game, etc. Um, and you know, in during the uh, editing process, which is nice. A lot of applications have that, but they they cost money. OBS free, definite plus. So there's a couple of different solutions you can do. One is use like say Audacity. Uh, which is a free program to record your voice track separately from your game. Uh, that way you can edit it independently, remove background noise, et cetera, et cetera. The other is to, well, the other solution is what I'm about to show you. So let me introduce you to a piece of free software, which I absolutely adore called voice meter. Now I used to use this application a lot. What it is, is a, it's a virtual mix. And you know what? I'm going to kill this while I'm thinking about it. It's a virtual mixing uh, application that allows you to adjust the sound of your microphone or you know several inputs. You have several inputs up here or up at the top. You see three different inputs, which we'll cover, and then a couple of different outputs over here. Um, and it lets you control the sound of these independently, which is cool. So like for example, right now, if, you, if I was to double click this, double clicking anything in this will reset it to its default value. So if I double click this like that, now this is what my blue snowball sounds like normally without any augmentation whatsoever. Uh, if I slide over here, it gets real kind of high pitched, tinny, whatever you want to call it. All the way over here, hey, this is Barry Manlow, and I'm saying, mm hmm, you know, it gets really stupid, bassy. And then up here, it adds reverb. So yeah, I can go over here and go Sunday, 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 or I can go over here and go ay 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 ay, sword on. Summon the Power Rangers! Ay, 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 ay. Yeah, something like that. Some crazy, crazy stuff, right? Pretty cool, though. Um, the other thing you might notice down here, I have Windows Media Player going. Volume on it's all the way up. Can't hear anything. That's because it's coming in through here. So if I start easing this up. There you go. You can now hear the music. And this allows you to, you know, control the volume of games, music, etc., and mix it. But you're like, well, we can already do that. But one of the things you can't do normally without, you know, going through a lot of trouble is uh, A, this lets me hear the microphone mixed with the music. So I can uh, adjust that because I actually like that a little bit better right there. Anyway, so you can hear what you're adjusting and then you can mix the music so you can hear it, your voice over the music and know the, how it's going to sound. Pretty cool, huh? So anything that's on A will let you hear it. But anyway, let's, uh, let's skip that for the moment. Let me show you where to get this. It will jump in and start setting it up. And we'll go over the, some of these options in detail. All right, so let me scroll back to the top of the page here. If you go here, vbaudio.pages.com. 
pages per so dash orange dot fr slash voice meter slash index dot htm which is quite a mouthful and i will have a link in the description because wow that's convoluted unless you're like you know a masochist and just want to type that out yourself more power to you anyway so you go here vb audio software um if you scroll down this kind of tells you about voice meter you know all the things it can do it has a nice flow chart sh- setups to give you ideas on how to utilize it properly and all the various things you can do with it if you scroll down toward the bottom of the page this is where you download it now you can download in two different versions or well not versions per se but file formats you can download it as a zip folder or you can download it as an installer i recommend using the installer and just doing it that way um yeah, I've, this is a pretty cool piece of software. It is donationware, which means you can download it. You can use it for free. There is no repercussions, but if you decide you like it and that it's useful for you, I highly you know, recommend you know tossing a few dollars over toward uh, toward the developer because this is awesome software. Anyway, so you download it, run the installer, get everything set up. It might ask you to reboot because it's going to install a virtual audio device. After that's done you'll get presented with this screen here. So first thing you do, you want to do is over here under one, you want to select your microphone. Now, as you can see, there's the blue snowball, which is by microphone shows up twice. There's WDM and MME. WDM stands for, I, I believe, and I sometimes get this wrong. So pardon me if I'm wrong, you can correct me in the description, but windows device manager or driver manager is one of those two. I always forget. Anyway, this one will be the choice that you're going to want to try and go with first because it is the lowest latency it you have no lag in your voice when talking um because it's talking directly with windows and utilizing the same you know uh technology that windows is using to capture your voice to begin with if for some reason your microphone doesn't want to work with that and go down here to the mme now uh, this is a higher i don't know what mme stands for but Uh, Basically, it's the highest compatibility. If it doesn't work with WDM, it's probably going to work with MME. But you will notice a little bit of lag when you're talking versus the reaction time in videos or however. It's going to take a couple uh, milliseconds before it comes out the speakers, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Now, after you get that set up, you're going to go over here to your hardware out, all the way on the other side of the application you're going to go under a1 and you're going to select your speakers or headset whatever it is that you use to listen to your games and your music etc and make sure that's selected a2 leave it alone don't need to select anything there but a1 is necessary all right so that is it for setting up this portion of voice meter i mean this is a voice meter's ready to rock and roll but right now you won't be able to tell anything so the next step you need to do is go down here to your Windows volume control, right click it, and choose either recording devices or playback devices, which will open up the screen right here. Under playback, scroll all the way down and choose voice meter input as your default playback device. And then go over to the recording tab and do the same thing for the voice meter output. And I know that sounds kind of weird because you're selecting an output for recording and an input for playing, but it'll it's it might become clearer here in a couple of moments so all right after after you're done that you're good to rock everything's going to be going in and out of voice meter so now let's jump over here to good old open broadcaster and go under settings go down to audio and you're going to select desktop audio device you can select whatever you want here it does not matter at all i have the voice meter input selected um, just to kind of show you what would will happen but we'll get to that in a minute so select whatever you want for desktop audio device for the microphone though you are going to want to make sure you select voice meter output that is going to be the main thing right there which obviously you know I already have selected next thing you want to do is you're going to want to go down to your microphone noise gate if you were using it and make sure it is not enabled. You want to disable this, and I'll tell you why here in just a minute. All right, so OBS is now set up and good to go. So what did we do there? Okay, so we set an audio, a couple audio devices in OBS, no big deal. Well, if you notice, I'm recording with this right now, this tutorial. I don't have the audio desktop device playing. 
but you're still hearing your music, it's coming across my microphone channel. That's because we are using the virtual input or output rather as our input device for our microphone. So anything that voice meter is playing through this, this virtual out, which is B, is coming through our microphone. So if I go over here to this virtual input right here, the one that has the music on it, and I uncheck B, now you can't hear the music. So if you notice, notice a voice meter under the main out, which is your speakers that you set, it's still chugging along. I can still hear it, but you can't. Inverse is true. If I turn B back on, you can hear it again. And now I can't. But yeah, obviously you guys can still hear it. Now this is cool because, you know, if you go here to A and you check that, you can hear your voice, as I was saying earlier, and let you mix things, you know, mix things up. So everything's gonna come through your microphone. That's why we don't need this second, you know, this desktop audio. And it doesn't ma really matter since OBS only encodes to one audio stream anyway. So what's the point of having two when you have something like this that can adjust your microphone, you're gonna even adjust, you know, the sound of the, whatever's coming through and do whatever you want to it. Increase the bass. It's cause it's all about that bass, about that bass, no treble. Ha ha, I made it funny. Anyway, so that's pretty much it in a nutshell. That's the easiest, that's the way to get it set up, get a rock and roll. Oh yes, the reason you don't want your noise gate is this right here where it says audibility is a noise gate. So this has a built-in noise gate. So you do not need it. Uh, if you have it turned on in OBS and you have you know music game sounds coming through and you have the noise gate in here turned on, you stop talking, chances are the music will cut out too or the game sounds will cut out if you have it too low and they'll only show up while you're talking. That's why you don't want to have it on OBS. Uh, you just use this one, it works great. Um, so let's see, what else was there? I was going, oh yeah, yeah. The reason uh, I have, I say it doesn't matter over here because if I have the uh, voice meter bit selected for the desktop audio device, I think it's really kind of weird with the music. That way you don't get any odd things happening in your video. Anyway, the software is really flexible. You can do a lot of things with it. I highly urge uh, you to check it out because it can make your microphone sound absolutely amazing and it'll give you finite control over most of the audio on your system. You can even have say uh, a second microphone or a um, Skype, TeamSpeak, what have you, coming in through the second input here and that way you can have the, you know, if you're recording with a buddy, you can have adjust all their voice controls and make them sound however the heck you want to. And mix it all independently of each other, which is really awesome and it really, really useful. Uh, I'm not going to cover that in this video on how to set up Skype to, and or anything to come through here. It, that does require another component, but it's not too difficult to set up. If you want to see that video, if you want me to do a tutorial on how to set up Skype or TeamSpeak or insert voice app here to come through that second hardware input. Uh, leave me a like, let me know in the description, and I will be more than happy to do that for you guys. Uh, if you guys have any questions whatsoever, the comment box down below, leave them there, or send me a tweet via my Twitter, which is twitter.com slash neocryptor, and I will do my best to help you out and answer those questions. Anyway, guys, if you found this video useful, give me a th good old thumbs up and uh, yeah, share it with your friends, whatever. If uh, this is the first one of my videos you've seen, make sure you hit that subscribe button for more tutorials, more gameplay, more crazy, crazy, craziness. And until next time, guys, have fun and I'll see you later. Thanks for checking out my video. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment, and share it with your friends and family. And until next time, have some fun and I'll see you later.